Elsie Bowerman, 1889-1973. Elsie was born in Tunbridge Wells into a wealthy family. They then lived in St Leonard's, but her father died when she was only five years old. She inherited enough money and property that she did not have to work. Despite this, the family lived frugally and were careful with their money. In 1901, aged 11, Elsie was the youngest at the prestigious girls' boarding school Wickham Abbey and gained first place in her form, showing the intelligence and spirit that was to carry her through the rest of her life. She went to Girton College, Cambridge to study medieval and modern languages, although women weren't allowed to have degrees then. Whilst there, she became a suffragette. Her mother was also very active in the movement alongside the Pankhursts. In 1912, Elsie and her mother travelled to USA to visit family. They happened to be on the RMS Titanic, which as we know was sunk by an iceberg. Elsie and her mother were amongst the few to survive. Rather than cut their trip short, they decided to continue with their visit. World War I broke out in 1914 and the suffrage movement paused their campaigning to focus on supporting the war effort. Elsie went off to the Russian front with the Scottish Women's Hospitals. She received the Certificate of the Russian Medal for Meritorious Service. World War I marked social change throughout Europe and Russia, with many lower classes rebelling against inequality. In the UK, this led to the success of the suffrage movement in some women having the vote and being able to enter Parliament. The Sex Disqualification Act in 1919 allowed women to enter professional careers that had been previously barred. This is when Elsie studied to become a lawyer and she was called to the bar in 1924, becoming one of the first groups of women to become barristers and appeared at the Old Bailey when she won a libel action brought by the National Union of Seamen against a communist. Elsie went on to have a varied career. In 1946 helped set up the United Nations Commissions of the Status of Women. She came to Eastbourne and continued campaigning and supporting causes. She felt, though, that the 1960s feminist movement betrayed women like her who had fought for equality with its focus on sexual freedom, and she died of a stroke in 1973. What would Elsie be doing now in our time? Probably choosing the same career, perhaps entering law earlier and becoming a judge, or perhaps she would be a politician and maybe the Home Secretary or even the Justice Secretary.